Hey friends, welcome to Carvesting. In today's video, we're going to have a look at Azure Functions and how we can implement Azure Functions in Node.js. So Azure Functions are basically a service provided by Microsoft Azure to run our backend serverless. So if you don't know what serverless is, it's basically running our backend, any application we have backend where we have the API and all. So we, it's, we are running everything without a server, so we don't need to host anything. And it's also cheaper to use when compared to a server. In this video, we're actually just going to do a simple thing. We'll create a web app with React, and we are going to use Node.js in the backend in our serverless function, and create a simple function where we just send a request, and it will respond. So that's what we're doing, but this can be implemented in any scale of application if you're building a huge app with a lot of functionality. It can also be done with Azure Functions. So anyways, to get started, we'll need to be having a Microsoft Azure account. So if you're not having a Microsoft Azure account, just go ahead to azure.microsoft.com and then click on free account. You can create one and you'll get a lot of credits. And once you have got an account, you can log in to the portal. So it's portal.azure.com and in here you can create a resource. So function apps are actually really cheap and it hardly costs anything. And with the trial, it's like way more than enough. So once you go here, you can go ahead and create a function app. It may take a few seconds to load. Now once that's loaded, you can go down and here first thing you have to do is to give a resource group. So once you create your account, you'll have a default subscription and you'll need to create a resource group. So resource group is basically where all your resources are together. So this function app is a resource and there are other resources like virtual machines and virtual networks. So this is just a place to host all your resources. So for now, I'm just creating a new resource group called my function app resource group you can just keep it short and sweet i'm just making it very informative click ok and then right here you should give a name for the function so this thing should be very unique and nobody else on azure should have the same name so for example if i give a generic name like hello you can see the app name hello is not available so you should give something unique for example tech harvesting function app and you can see that there's a check mark here which means this name is available then if you scroll down you can choose our runtime stack so as I said we'll be using node.js now if you're using some other technologies you can obviously choose them from here for example if you use PowerShell, Java, Python, .NET, C Sharp or as I said node.js then you can choose the version so let's use the 18 long-term support version now the region, uh, some features may not be available based on the region you choose. I'm going to go with the default East US and when you scroll down you can choose the operating system. I'm going to stick on with the default windows and here are the hosting options. So this is like uh, you can, if you pay more then you can get more speed and uh, more support and all. So for now we can just go with the default consumption serverless version. Next you can go to storage. This is a storage account where everything is going to be stored. This is going to be created automatically so i'm not going to choose another one next networking you can enable public access that's important so that we'll be able to access the function app from our react application monitoring it's up to us if you want to uh, enable application insights for now i'm just going to hit no then here if you want to do ci cd you can uh, configure that here so you know what ci cd is and i have done a video on that if you don't know about it you just go ahead and watch it anyways for now for this a project which is very simple we don't need a CICD so I'm going to disable it tags we can just leave it as a default and go here to review plus create and once it's validated you can go ahead and click create here now this might take a few seconds so I'll be back once it's done once the function has created you can click on go to resource and then that will redirect you to uh, the function app in here you'll be able to access all the details and all the information all the properties and you can configure the functions so if you go down here and click on functions you'll be able to see all the functions right now by default there are no functions so if you go ahead and click on create you'll be able to create a function now there are different types of triggers that can be used to trigger a function so for example the HTTP trigger is what we will be using which means like uh, for example, if you go onto a URL, like a AP, normal API, then only then will the function be run. There's timer trigger, which means you give a specific time, and every day on that time, or however uh, you schedule it according to that, it will uh, run the function. 
Then there are different types, for example, it's Azure Blob Storage Trigger. So whenever a, a blob file is added to a container, that time uh, the, the function will be triggered. Now there are a lot of other ways, but for now, we are sticking with the easy one, HTTP Trigger and we're gonna develop in portal now there are other ways for example if you have vs code you can directly go ahead and uh, develop in vs code that's also easy to use but for now i'm gonna stick with the default develop in portal then we can name our function so for example we can give it as my name function because this is basically just gonna we're gonna input a name and we're gonna get it back basic use of uh doing what we can do with an api we're doing it in the function then we hit create and it should create the function so as you can see here are the details of the function and if you go to code plus test then here you'll be able to go ahead and edit the function uh, the JavaScript code basically so as you can see here we have a basic editor just like VS code and here uh, you have the function so it has the context object and the request so you can access the request information like the query or the body of the request so query is where we add the parameters for example if you have uh, if you write google.com then we can have question mark something equals so this is the parameter that we can pass so that's what goes into query and then we have the body so that's the details that is passed in the request body and then yeah that's basically it so in the context.rest we're sending back what is uh what we want to respond with the request so this function will be run and this will be responded so for example you can uncomment this and give status 200 so this is very similar to express days if you have used it so it's gonna be very easy to migrate towards this and yeah so the other thing is integration so you can just go ahead and save this To integration then we can go here and uh, edit our trigger so we gave it as the NHTP trigger and we can see all the request parameter everything and if you want to change something you can go ahead and do it here you can also give the HTTP methods so here by default we have given get and post we don't need post so we can maybe remove it and save so only when a get request is sent to this uh, endpoint, only uh, then will this uh, function run. So anyways, uh, that's that. And now I think we can jump over to VS Code and start uh, coding our React application. So in here, we can just remove the default boilerplate code. So this is just a basic React app I have created. And that's that. Now we have to go ahead and install Axios so that we can make a request to our API. So if you go here, you can see that is get function URL. So if you copy that and paste it in here, you can see this HTTP trigger function executed successfully, pass a name in the query and so on. So that's basically this message we're giving here. So what we're checking is if there's a query dot name, if there's a name, then give this response this one here if it's not there give this so we can specify a name here as you can see that's why we're getting this so if you give a name and name equals Nasil then you can see hello Nasil this HTTP trigger function is given correct successfully so that's this here so we can maybe edit this message this function ran successfully and we can leave this message as the default and again you can hit save and once it's saved if you run this again you can see this function ran successfully so anyways in here first we we'll create a simple in uh, form so we can have an input and a button Let me just disable copilot and then we can add a state so we can have const value comma set value equals use state 
and then here we can change the value to be value and on change we can have set value e dot target dot value now just for now we can just display value here and have an on submit function so on submit and create a function here it should be async and we can just do e dot pre prevent default and can pass this as e we go back to our browser and open it up you can see that we have this and if i type something in the input we're getting the output here so that's simple next we'll have a look at how we can make a request to the backend this is going to be very easy so in here we can import axios from axios and here we can do axios dot get and we're gonna pass in our URL here so that's basically what we have here minus the name now here I'm gonna give a small placeholder as name because we're gonna have to enter the name in that input field and that's what's gonna be sent to our server so we can have a query option here or params option here and params is basically uh, all the parameters that we're passing so we can give it as an object and have name as value so the state is going to be passed here so then that should give us something so const we can destructure it as data and always be sure to put await since it's a promise and we can log the data now this is not gonna work because we have course error so if we open our network tab and hit submit we can see we have a core network error and as you can see it's because of the access control all origin which means it's a course error so now this is very useful when we create our web apps but right now what we need to do is go into our function so our function and then just scroll down and you find api course so click on course you can add an origin here so just do http colon slash slash local host and the port so here is 5173 and hit save Once that's done, you can go back here and send the request again. So I'm going to clear out and submit. And you can see hello, the name we gave this function ran successfully. So that's really simple. And that's basically how we can implement Azure functions in a simple application. So maybe we can show that response as a alert. So alert data. So it's better than looking at the console. So if I give my name, maybe just remove that. I hit submit. Hello, Nasil. This function ran successfully. So that was it for this video. I just want to show you how you can use Microsoft Azure functions with a React app. Now, this can be extended to any kind of app you're building. It can be social media app, any type. Microsoft Azure functions are very useful and also plus point is that it's very cheap when compared to hosting our backend completely by ourselves. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and share with your friends if you found this video helpful. See you in the next video. Bye friends.